Welcome to TTP, Turnbuckle Talk Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Dirty Blondes. Dirty Blondes is a bar located in the heart of Blackpool, famous for their banging tunes, cocktails and 18-inch pizzas. The only place to get pizza as big as your table across the Bad Coast. If you're ever in Blackpool, check them out. They're on Facebook and on Instagram. That's Dirty Blondes Blackpool. Welcome to TTP, Temporal Talk Podcast. I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. Braveheart himself, <laughs> John Dugan. <laughs> <laughs> These are getting better, Kieran. How are you? Yeah, I, I, I need, I'm running out of Scottish um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> phrases, so I need, I'll, I'll come up with them every week. Um, today we've got a special guest. Um, we've got um, the Marcus with us from WAW. Hello, guys. Hi, how are you? Thank you very much, how are you? Yeah, good. good. Yeah, I'm Surviving. good. <laughs> um, do you want to just introduce yourself, tell people who may not know who you are, and yeah, give yourself yeah. a little introduction. So, uh, my name is Margus Nelson, aka Marvel Margus. I am the current WAW World Light Heavyweight Champion in WAW, and... I've been setting myself up to get ready for the end to jump up the talk. I have a little Marvel Margaret Dan and a little figure of me in the background. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Where did you get the figure from? Oh, it's one of my one of my wrestling mates made it for me. I got it for Christmas. I didn't know what it was till I saw the feet. And when I unwrapped it, I was like, oh, it's me. I didn't recognize it because I mean, the design for it is actually pretty really <laughs> good. Yeah, it's, it's cool. I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen it on your Instagram. It looks really cool. Yeah. Yeah, when you're, when you're a bit closer. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, isn't it? <laughs> That's not bad, that. Got the little red hair as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to me, if you have a wrestling figure, you've made it as a wrestler. That I mean, I could retire the next day if I had a figure. No, he's not going to stay there. <laughs> I'll just move him away anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually have made it now because of wrestling. Because most people think I wasn't going to make it at all. And um, yeah. because they said, oh, I'll never be a wrestler and all that stuff. And now, ever since I got this title and all that, prove people wrong. Yeah, yeah so I mean, fine. I believe you're, um, you went to like a, um, a careers advisor and said, do you want to be a wrestler? And they kind of just laughed at you, essentially. Yeah, so it's pretty much... When, it, when we're all sitting on the table, like um, our classroom, the day was somewhere about, you know, I was like year 10 or 11, I think, when yeah. the teacher said to us all, she said, okay, guys, so we're nearly coming to the end of term and all that. So what is the most best thing you want to do in the future? Everyone was like going around to saying, oh, I want to be a cat, look at all the cats and people and all that, yada, yada, yada. And then when it gets to me, I said, I definitely know what I want to do. And she said, what is that? I want to be a professional wrestler. But then when I said that, when everyone completely went dead silent. No one even say one thing apart right. from the teacher. He said, um, can, I borrow you to, can I borrow you to the office, please? And I was like, I thought I was actually going to be student of the month. I was actually <laughs> really hyped. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, I, worked, I reached my goal. So when one was, we sat down and he said, look, Margus, I am. I heard what you said in your class. I hate says, but you cannot be a wrestler. And that's when I froze. That's shocking, right. isn't it? Yeah. So I said, why? Because when we see you in school now, you were like anger and hurting people by mistake. But, but when we see you, you just lose it. And I was like, mm. so? I said to him, but the wrestling could change everything, though. And that's when the argument went a little bit heated up, it did then. Yeah. Such a shame. You'd think it'd give you more support than that. Mm. Yeah. Because it's not, it's not that far away to be able to do that. Like you've done, yeah. you've shown. How far after that did you go and see about learning how to wrestle? Yeah, yeah, I did. A few years later. Because from the moment when I walk out of that office, I got actually looked myself in the mirror. I'm like, I was being like, 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 no, this is it. This is how I am. You can't even do my dream. 
And I was like, no, 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 I can't think like that. I must go and do it myself. Who cares what the teachers say? I said to myself. So I was, when I left school, I went to Pathways College. It was I mean, a Hewitt school. It was quite rubbish, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so um, learning there, started wrestling. When I first found WAW, it's in um, a Yarmouth, in Yarmouth show once, when me and my dad went to find. And that's when I first met Zach. I was like, maybe he could teach me how to wrestle, I said to myself. So I asked the boss, Ricky, that's when I first met him, saying, well, what's the number for all WAW so I can join? He's like, yeah, you come and join us. We're looking for more people. I was like, all right, let's do it. So... Two years there, me and my mother went down to the gym and I looked around, there was rings, weight equipment, and then Zach right there, he's teaching my first technique, the ones to tens, ins and outs, ins and outs. Then, and Zach said to me, right, time for your bigger thing. And I was like, what? Taking the bumps. I was like, okay then, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> so I filmed with a crash mat a couple of times, done it several times. Then, and he said, all right, we're moving the crash mat. I said to myself, what? I was like, oh no. And I remember the head tucked in and all that, and I took my bump and I was like, mm. <laughs> I didn't, honestly, it did not tickle one bit. <laughs> yeah. God. Do you know, honestly, like that proper pees me off. Like somebody would, like, especially as someone who's um, supposed to give career advice, kind of just shut you down instantly, with not, not any follow up or anything. Yeah, um, just honestly, but I suppose it's kind of made you eager for it and want to put people on. Yeah, besides, when I took the bomb, it, it's not only did it hurt, but it lit like an excitement though, because I was like, yeah. I think I finally made it, I finally reached it and beat the mm. teachers and everybody else who took the mick out of me, think I couldn't do it. Yeah, has any have you been in touch with anyone from school that? said you would never make it or anything or you know it's actually yes it's true they actually have texted me about it some, nice of them words. Were, some of them were some some of them were like yes Marcus, you've done it you made it but some of them were like no it's easy i can walk in the park like that and that's when they're a bit jealous <laughs> <laughs> oh, haters gonna hate yeah i was like i said well go on then you try them you can do it. I bet they won't even do it. And it's been a few years and they haven't even done it. Uh, so, I mean, people should... all talk, aren't they, John? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'd love to try it. I don't know if I'd be any good at it. You seem to be <laughs> really good at it. How long, how long do you think it took you to get uh, good enough to do your first match? Um, oh, I think about a year, right? think it was i think it was a year because i was um, going through the basics learn to turn, hit the turnbuckles properly flip bumps rolls and all that stuff the more times i get better and better and better the more confident i get and that's yeah. why i had my first match it was amazing my first match was that the first match was that the one that was on step into the ring or did you wrestle before that uh wrestle before step into the ring i have how was, was that? How, how was your first match? Were you nervous or were you quite confident in what you were going to be doing? To be honest, I didn't know which one to choose. Because one, one of them inside here was like nervous and worried, but the rest of my whole body was like full of excitement, ready to explode. And like, I have fi like saying, I finally reached my goal. And so when I went up there to Burton and everyone started cheering, I was like, I made it. And that's where I am now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I want to be quite direct though. Um, but so you have learning difficulties. Yeah. Um, and the fact that you've gone, you know, right to WAW, uh, WAW and then got the belt. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just proves that, like, if you put your mind to it and determination, you can achieve anything. And yeah. honestly, you should be really proud of yourself. I have, I have. I've been proud of myself since. Because ever since when I had the title, when Billman passed it to me, the whole, my whole life turned around. Like, 
it's like this is just not the end this is just the beginning of a mm. new chapter how, how do you feel about because you essentially now are the role model you've kind <laughs> yeah. of set the bar you, you have set the bar yeah i feel i feel really 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 happy about it it's like i yeah. finally broke free from my cursed past till right now where i am because if i didn't found zach or waw i don't know wh where i'll be then yeah i mean we interviewed zach and zach is just he's just such a nice guy and um it really shows on the bbc documentary um as well which is a great series yeah it was an amazing series it was a lot of fun having pizza that was my favorite part <laughs> that's when I said to Zach, I said, is it just me now? Or if I'm getting really, really more more confident with jokes now? Because I'm like, because mm. when I say a few things, I'm like, yeah. Because I didn't know what jokes are. Because I didn't take it seriously. Because what I thought, like, they thought they actually mean it. When I said, no, 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 no. It's just a joke. It's just a joke. Because I remember years ago at Epic when, when one of my mates going to get an orange. Um, a lemonade or like a, a lemon fruit and when I came back one of them said that's a lime and I said no it isn't that's a lemon he said no that's a lime until I got so angry I started squeezing the lemon <laughs> and one, right, of okay. them, one of my other mates said no 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 Marcus Marcus it's just a joke that is a lemon you got it right <laughs> <laughs> yeah now, I mean with, with the footage um, you know you're there with the other wrestlers and it just seems such a family environment and yeah. Um, yeah it's really good viewing if you haven't seen it, it's on BBC iPlayer still um, Step Into The Ring um, yeah it, it was a, it was a really good series yeah I, I watched it so many times as well and I mean I said to myself this is what I need to do now this is what might help other people to achieve their dreams yeah absolutely. yeah I think it definitely it, it's such a good documentary because it shows two things. It shows, you know, someone with autism reaching their goal, like you have, and how wrestling can help people such as yourself or, and like all it, every, everyone on it had different uh, things going on. Yeah. I think like it showed how good wrestling is because sometimes when they do wrestling documentaries, they aren't always showing a good light. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, and because so, straight from the you're on the first episode, so straight away it showed your story and to doing that match and how you progress in that. I think you're getting better all the time as well. Because I am, I am. I feel more stronger, more confident, and more more exercise now because I've been doing running every single day now. Nice. Yeah, I've seen that. What is your goal? How many, how far are you trying to run? Because I see it on your Instagram. You do it quite a lot. Yeah, because um, there's a lot of places. I'm trying to see I get somewhere about five, work my way up to five or six miles, I think. Work my way up. Getting ready to but wrestle I'm, again. Yeah, I'm actually dying to get back in the ring because of, you know, of COVID. It has been, you know, stabbing me a couple of days because I just keep missing going out and being in the ring, seeing my friends. And all that stuff. Mm. We were planning to watch Godzilla versus Kong next month as well. We've been talking about that for months. <laughs> Another thing I noticed that you watch, Marcus, is um, Jackass, because I see it a lot on your Instagram. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love it. Because me and my cousin, my cousin Anne, we played Jackass again so much when we were young. I've seen that. I've never played it. I've, Have, I what? We are, know yeah, it I think it's a lot of fun, it is. I Is must it? admit, like, me and my friends at high school, we would just, I mean, it sounds bad, but we would copy Jackass and we would just do stupid stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, when yeah, I but... saw the intro of Jackass, I was like, I'm really tempted to do that, jump in the trolley and go all the way down to the hill. Yeah. And what, what did you do as a kid, John? No, I watched Jackass. I mean, I have never played the video game with it. It's actually a lot of fun, the game. Because I think what the game is, you do the story mode, and you have to be a new um, director of it because one of them hurt his, um, downstairs by slipping on a banana into a, um, one of those watering cans from, um, from the US. 
when you get water from the fire gates use yeah yeah that's how it happened and he said and the beginning of it, he's like oh man the idiot dropped the camera too thanks a lot <laughs> i mean i would be um, annoyed that he dropped my camera <laughs> who's your favorite on jackass I didn't really much know their names, though. I didn't know one named Johnny Alex Bell. I remember, it, no, I know his name, because I keep hearing his name all the time. Yeah, it's kind of his show, isn't it? Yeah. I think I never another one named Ryan Dunn. Right, Ryan Dunn, yeah. I, I used to like rap himself. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would happen, right, is I'd be watching Jackass at home with my parents, well, when my parents were upstairs or whatever, and then rap himself would just have a segment where he runs across the street absolutely naked <laughs> by, in slow motion. Well, that's when my mum walks in. <laughs> 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 mum goes, what are you watching? I'm like, oh, it's just Jackass. <laughs> um, me and my cousin's favourite one was um, Dirk and Wake boarding, boarding when you have a trash lid and you've been holding on like, yeah. uh, like water skiing. I love how he sounds like, hey, I'm Ryan Dunn, and uh, this is what we call the waypoint. As they come up from behind and hit them with um, trash lids on his head. <laughs> like, he's like, ah, Jesus. Me and my friends did a bit of antiquing as well. Do you ever do that? What's that? Antiquing is where you just get some flour. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember that as well. <laughs> <laughs> And also, the most things I enjoy more in life was um, steam trains as well. I think you saw that on the documentary. Yeah, I've seen. I've seen that you've done a lot of. Um, you've found like a lot of abandoned ones. Are they quite easy to find? Like um, abandoned train stations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. Me and my dad and started doing that ever since we found found the first one um, outside of North Walsham. How do you find it? Is it like? Well, Dad found it first, and he said, Marcus, I need to show you something. So what we did, we got into my little classic mini car, and he showed me, asked me where to drive. And then that's when we found, I said, no way, is that an old train station? And it was like a long line, of, uh, just a long line. And we found an old bridge as well. God. That's cool. It's amazing that they're just there and totally yeah. abandoned. My dad was daydreaming, was like, if I won the lottery, I will come back here and turn this whole place into a cat. When people walk <laughs> by and buy drinks and carry on walking. I actually ran down there, I did. I actually ran to Stanton to the train station. And it was a long run, it was. Very long run. God. Have you been on the Hogwarts Express? Well, I have been on the Hogwarts Express in USA on in, um in Florida, in the Universal Studios, when that's yeah. when we went to America. It was quite amazing when I saw the steam train. I said, is there actually anyone driving? And I was like, hold on, isn't anybody driving? When I was <laughs> controlled by tracks, I was like, oh. <laughs> we went I've never seen carriage. it. Uh, we, we went to the carriage, and then there was like, like a little um, scenery where you're watching, like you're actually on it. When mm. you move along, and oh. when we we when the train start, we're like, oh no! It's, this is when the, the guy pulls when the person grab, grabs the skeleton's in hand to the door. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh no, it's that. And when we look, it was there. I, I was like, oh, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> that, I believe um, the Hogwarts Express train is doing a tour, so it's coming to Preston. Uh, it's going to Carlisle. Yeah. Um, it's, I don't know if it's coming down your way. I know it's doing a little tour. I hope it is. Like, like when me and my dad saw the, the famous Flying Scotsman, that was amazing. Yeah. I mean, she, I've been wanting to stand on that train ever since I was little. I mean, she won, she's been all over the world, Flying Scotsman, to Australia, to USA. And she's been broke a squirrel record. I've been honestly, my whole room right now is full of just train pictures of flying Scotsman, even Star, Mallard, the A4 class. Oh, wow, I've seen the flying Scotsman. Uh, Scotsman comes uh, through near where I live as well. Yeah, uh, Neen Valley. It's quite Valley. Hmm. I was actually, I was actually in the front carriage, and I was behind her, and that was amazing. <laughs> and it was for my birthday present it was 
when I when me and my mother went on the Flying Scotsman, had a ride and watch her come past as well. I said, yeah. I said to myself, she is so beautiful. I mean, she's, I think she's one of the most beautiful trains that ever exist. I must admit, there is something really exciting about a steam train, just because you don't really see them as much anymore. No. Mm. Um, yeah. Only the famous ones can stay on the line, like Flying Scotsman, Sir Nigel Bridgley. I always thought they want they ever, ever, ever bring Mallard back onto the track. Because ever since she had that crack boiler, it, I didn't, didn't have enough much money to um, fix her back up. I mean, yeah, the matter is, it must be quite expensive to fix things like that. She, she was a beautiful train. She was broke her rep, broke flying sculptor's record, one hundred eighty-six miles per hour. I remember that oh, one. Wow. Is that how fast they go? Yeah, oh. that's crazy. I didn't know that. One hundred eighty-six miles per hour. Yeah. Wow. Because when my granddad, Eddie, that's what my dad's, my mum's dad's name, she mm. eats a lot of stories about flying Scotsman and Mallard. The main story I really wanted, it was interesting, was Flying Mallard, how she broke um, flying Scotsman's record. And I said to my, said to my granddad, I said, how she broke the record? By going 186 miles per hour. I said, wow, that fast? But now, when I've been watching British steam trains, learning more about Mallard, because she's most most famous than Sir Nigel Bresley. Right. <laughs> um, talk about going fast. I see that you've been learning to drive. How's that been going? It's actually going really well. I have done a few driving lessons. One of my new my good friend um, Carl who does a driving lessons for me every Wednesday. I, well, I can't do it now because um, pandemic to lockdown, all that stuff. Mm. Yeah, I'm getting there really slowly now, but the only thing I need to work on now is my theory test. Yeah. Mm. To be honest, I'm not looking forward to it, though. <laughs> <Just> really <laughs> it's, I, I had to do it twice. Um, I think I did it once in Blackpool. I wasn't very good at it at all because I just didn't learn the test at all. Um, is that your mini that you show on Instagram, then? Yeah, my little classic mini is... It was not really good when we first bought it because the wheels were wrong and everything was dented up. The air gas was all rusted and all the way. So my dad has a good friend of his fix it all up into a brand new Mini. It looks really good. Yeah, it, it does look cool. cool. Yeah, I love a Mini. Yeah, Especially yeah. the old the old, um, the old ones, I think, uh, look so much better than the newer ones. The reason why I wanted the mini because I wanted like like the Italian job mini. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I was like, the bloody doors off. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's one of my most favourite films. They did make a 2003 one when they used the new version minis. Mm. Yeah. To be honest, I didn't really enjoy it. I said, you know, a, lot, a lot of people said they didn't really enjoy it, but I don't know, I quite enjoyed it. I mean, it's not, it's nothing on the classic film, mm. but... I enjoyed it. I mean, what's your opinion, John? I like the, I think the original was better. But yeah, I can watch it. It's not a film I watch a lot. I prefer the older one. Yeah. Mm. There's some good scenes in the older one. Like, it's amazing. If you think when it was filmed, like, 60s, mm. some of the scenes in that film were amazing. I think mm. that's why I like minis, because of that film, to be fair. Yeah, same. <laughs> mm. I always take the mega out of people and say, they ask, where are you taking that mini? We're going to steal gold. Yeah. <laughs> I said, good luck with that. There's law everywhere now since those dates. Yeah. I said, well, I'll just use the sewers. Um, I love how they go down the sewer as well when they're getting chased. Yeah. <laughs> it's, all, it's the ending as well is always good, isn't it? Because they're... Yeah. You don't know if they manage to get away with it or not. It leaves it sort of hanging in the no, balance. Hang on, there, lads. I got a great idea. <laughs> uh, and that's it. I was like, well, that's it. What are they going to do? <laughs> and I've, it's been years now. No, no words. <sighs> so I just think about it in my mind right now, like saying, okay, they must have grabbed a rope, pulled the gold forward, and take it all off at the same time, and <laughs> come. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, what was I going to say? Cause just go back to wrestling. Uh, we've talked about all sorts there. Um, <laughs> what was it like getting your ring gear? Really good. Nice and shiny. Exactly the same how I made it on WWE Games as well. I made it on um, what I want to look like and take a picture, send it to one of my friends, um, named Stu. Uh, was one of my other friends, Cam's mother. She makes all the designs. Oh, cool. Amazing. How come you picked purple? Well, I was using purple, but when I was playing a game called Saints Row, and I just saw the purple uh, mic, yeah. I love purple because every time I keep playing the game, then purple, purple, purple. I'm like, I need to put this on my wrestling gear. Yeah. I think it looks it's really good. Enough. It stands out. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, it does stand out. A lot of people have, you know, like white or black. Uh, but yeah, purple definitely stands out. Yeah, Ricky said to me, "We that's the first person we see with different colours. Because he, because when I, when I came wrestling, everyone was wearing like black, red. I don't know about any other colours. I think it gives you sort of um, like a superhero look, which goes with your name, obviously, Marvel Marcus. I think it looks really good. Well, like Marvel Marcus is like a superhero, but he's also a fighter as well. Mm. Like, he doesn't back down from any fight. Uh, Who do you plan to wrestle in the future? Oh, yes. I got about three, I have. The main person who I really want to fight is Chris Jericho. Mm. Yeah. He's the top of my list. He's the person <laughs> who I want to fight. Uh, yeah. he, you should call him out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chris Jericho, if you ever watch this, I'm calling you out. And I'm, I'm actually meaning that I will want to fight Chris Jericho. Then my second dream opponent is Nick Aldis, the MWA world champion. Oh. Yeah. And then my third opponent is going to be Cody Hall, the son of Scott Hall. Mm. Well, yeah, yeah. A good wrestler. Yeah. I met, I've met. i been training with him a couple of times as well. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 That's and cool. That- he wrestles in his dad's gear, doesn't he? Yeah. That kind of work, yeah. How, how is um, how is he like you know his persona and wrestling? He's, he's actually a really kind person. Talks mm. to me. Sometimes I can be a bit cheeky. Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> most people call me the cheeky one in wrestling. Sometimes. Um, there's other like there is another person who I really want to face. That is Kenny Omega. I love to fight him. That'd be a good one. Yeah, but the Would main you... person is Chris Jericho. Would you ever wrestle against Zach? I was just about to ask that. You took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> I really do want to fight Zach one on one. I really want to do that in a fight, man. I really want to face him one on one, still the master. Like Ricky Jr. Mm. took on the chair as well. Yeah. Most people yeah, are asking for that. I think you'd have to do it in the right moments and, you know, have you turn on your trainer, Zach. Hmm. I think that would, that would get over. <laughs> yeah. Well, that means I've got to change my ways. Because I've been thinking about changing ways and stuff. Because I've been listening to different music because that keeps me occupied and confident. Like, when I'm angry, I put angry music on and, like, get it all out, get it all out. When I'm sad, I put sad music on and get that all out. But when I feel really joy on that, I put joy, happy music on. The thing is with, with you, Marcus, is you're so well-loved and you're such a great baby face. I don't know if you could turn heel. I think that you'll still be loved as a heel. I know. That's how Chris Jericho, when everyone was like, when he's a heel, then everyone still loves him as a baby face or love him um, as a baby face, but a heel. Yeah. <laughs> I do take the mick out of people as well, saying, you just made a list. Just use it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favourite one of him. Yeah. So you've, you've got, um, there's quite a few dates coming up in um, WAW. Um, I've seen they've advertised throughout the year. There's some big shows coming up. So how do you feel about getting back into the ring? Do you feel prepared or, you know, are you a bit? I'm ready. I'm born ready. Yeah. 
Because when people ask me to keep like give up, you can't win. But all I do is just get up and just just use my power. Like like um, Goku and Dragon Balls. Like like he gets up, then turns Super Saiyan or something. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's mad that your last show was in December. I mean, it just seems such a long time ago. It's. I know. You know but we're almost there, at least. I hope so, because I just really can't think of all this stuff. Because mm. I had my jab the other day, and I was like, oh. <laughs> I came in at this the other day as well. I'm the only one who's yeah. not at it. <laughs> no, it's just you. <laughs> yeah. Did you feel um, awful the next day? Yeah, I felt awful. My yeah. eyes were burning, my whole skin was burning red hot. Even my whole body started aching as well. Yeah, I was sweating in bed. Like, honestly, it's, it was horrendous. I, I got up at six. I couldn't sleep anymore. Yeah. My eyes were burning like... Uh, I was like, hurry up. When I start hearing the birds, I was like, okay, it's nearly morning. We're almost there. Just a few more sleeps. <laughs> when we mm -hmm. checked, I'm like, no more. I can't do it. I'm waking up. <laughs> yeah. Do you, um, are you watching the current product, um, like the WWE wrestling? Not really, to tell the truth. Yeah. Yeah, it used to be, I used to love WWE back in his days, like the John Cena, the Triple H. That's the true WWE, but now it's just dead. Yeah, I suppose it's not what it used to be. <laughs> Especially when you have people like Bad Bunny at WrestleMania. Yeah. The worst one was Ronda Rousey at SummerSlam. That one, that what killed me from WWE. Did you know I won Ronda Rousey? No. Who, who would think in the middle of the ring doing this, like, Okay, I'm just sitting here, shut my eyes. Um, I'm doing a gypsy. I'm sitting here. You can come strangle me. <laughs> Angry face. Yeah, she, she was trying to um, bait her in, wasn't she? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I need a come. And I was like, what the beat was this? <laughs> I said, who would sit in the middle of the ring doing gypsy stuff, come in, <laughs> pull it down, and yell, shut up, break her arm, break her arm, tap out, done. Because <laughs> well, we watched that at some, on our summer slam with me and my mates on TV. We were watching it on TV and we were like, What is she doing? It's like, one of them was like, Okay, well, I'm looking forward to this. And I was like, <laughs> and then, I was going to say, <laughs> when it comes to WrestleMania, do you all watch it, um, WAW together? Well, they did watch more. Well, I wasn't there. They watched the Royal Rumble they did when Edge returned. Yeah. When I, mm. I watched the highlights, and when I saw Edge, I was like, is that Edge? <laughs> oh, shit. But I'm happy, too. I was like, he's back. He's, it's been nearly nine years. Yeah. See, ever since he had that neck problem back in 2011. Mm. I thought, I wish he did return. I mean, I have gone off WWE now, I have to be honest. The only new company I'm really enjoying so much is AEW, and that's the place I really want to go. Who's your favourite in AEW? John Marksley, but definitely Chris yeah. Jericho, because he's there. Yeah, John, John Marksley is awesome in WWE. Yeah. Yeah. I love John Marksley. <laughs> Do you reckon, um, I mean, is that your dream to kind of go um, to a massive company that's televised like AEW? Yeah, definitely. Because my first dream was going to go to WWE, but when ever since they did that, because uh, honestly, I've been bragging about it for a long time when my mother said, when my mother said, why do you want to go to WWE? Because I don't bow to them. I don't at all. <laughs> Thanks mm -hmm. right now, I don't bow to WWE one bit. Yeah. Only AAW, I love to go. And mm -hmm. but WWE more W A W meant sorry. W W A W more. I love it more than anything else. But I mean, I've seen um W A W, they have um matches at Norwich City football ground. Oh that which, was I'm I'm not sure how many that holds, but that must be I mean, that must be incredible to have it, it in a full-on stadium. Yeah. 
Because when they first talked about it, I was like, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to work or not. But then I, I was like, no, it isn't. It's working. It's amazing. <laughs> I was like, that's a lot of people. Yeah. Obviously, my hands are on my head. And I was gripping my hair because I was like, no way. <laughs> Grant Hall, he was amazing. amazing. Did you wrestle that Norwich? Yeah. Yeah, and the um, Rumble match. That's cool. I, and I did got hit by the steel chair by Big Joe. <laughs> how, how was the uh, steel chair? Did it was it painful? Yeah, painful. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine it was. <laughs> he spat water at me and then hit the chair. I was like, oh no! And I was like, waiting for someone to eliminate me. <laughs> it was amazing, I, though. I mean, I'm just kind of going back a little bit, but I mean, wrestling has changed our life. Like you said, you said direct like the quote you said wrestling has got rid of like your demons from your past yeah um, which you know is amazing do you get any people coming up to you asking advice of how to be a wrestler and you know asking you questions about wrestling yeah when i do a lot of camps usually zach or soraya knight or ricky knight tell them about me yeah i was like we do have a person that's autism and they said really they said that boy there He's got autism and he's wrestling. People say he couldn't do it. Look at him now. He's wrestling like a star now. Because they, the night, they saved my life. Because mm. it wasn't for them, I don't know where I would be. Because my mother was been begging for help. And she fought one man, that was Zach. He was the only, he's the only person that can keep me straight line, like keep me balanced. Because Doray and I, she definitely keeps me balanced as well, but Zach more as well. Mm. But I still got a lot more control of the anger a bit, but I can't show weakness. That's one thing that's worrying me so much the past few years now. Try not to show the anger weakness. If I show it weakness, then it will just come straight at you. Yeah. I'm taking all this boy now. Rage, rage, rage. Because ever since when that head teacher said you'll never be a wrestler, I get I was so angry. I mean, I went bright red. My skin went red and grit my teeth. I thought it was when my teeth were gritting, I thought my teeth were going to like bleed at the same time. Huh. Right. Yeah. Have you um have you kind of been into any like schools or you know like um, doing any kind of motivational speaking? Because I think. I think your story is definitely, you know, people would want to hear it. And I think people would get um, inspired by it. I was going to do it to my school, I was. And when I yeah. sent the letter, they, I hate to say it, but they actually chicken out. Why? They actually chicken out. I said, I said to them nice and clear, can I please bring the wrestling to the school and show how much they change me and all that stuff. No violence, no bah, hit him in a chair, all that stuff. I said to them. <laughs> None of them just funny acting of like poking the eyes or like saying stop, slap, or, or some chase around or funniness and stuff. No violence, no nothing. Can you let me know? I said to him. And he brought it back and I read it and I was annoyed and but laughing at the same time. I said I to him, I declined it. That's. I mean, you think about all the stupid stuff that came to our schools. Like, mm. there, there was a guy who was a maths, a mathematician, like, he was a, did magic with maths. And yeah. it's just these stupid things. If a bunch of wrestlers came to our school, I'd be well happy. I'd actually listen and kind of pay attention. Yeah. But instead, he decided to chicken out. Uh. Well, what a... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he me from wrestling when he told me about it as well. He was no, like, he probably feels embarrassed that he kind of said you won't be a wrestler, and now mm. you are. Because mm. when I saw him again, and um, because my school used to do a white line cafe, I used to do that in pathways as well. It was quite a lot of fun, though. Mm. So when I went in there after I'd done the gym, I walked up there to have lunch, and he was there. I was like, oh, no, not him. <laughs> so I came in normally, calm and peaceful. 
And he's like, oh, it's you, Marcus. Hello there. I'm like, oh, God. I said, please go away. Come on, go away. <laughs> <laughs> I had my lunch. I went pay. He said this. I heard you're doing wrestling now. And I said, I said, yes. And why? I thought you were still forbidden. I thought he said to him, he said to me, I said, you what? You say I'm still forbidden. I said, I, I, he said he was, he lost his words then. But that's when I actually turned the trigger on and let my anger actually come into me that time. So what I did, I dropped my bag down and actually walked up to his face and actually stuff actually had a go at him. <laughs> God. I said to him, because you didn't want me to wrestle, you're just worried I'll lose it and snap you in half. <laughs> <That's what laughs> is. And then I picked my back up and then, you know, hit my bag onto his shoulder. Like a little, because like, if you know you're like a dinosaur and you scare off another male, you just get like a little cheap shot, like whack on the other dog. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty much what I've done. I use my bag as a tail and just use the whack on <laughs> <laughs> and the most of the people were shocked they were like wow like and he was like angry as well he was like yelling like how dare you Marcus and he and I was like I looked at him for the last time I said look sir this is the last time you're going to see me so try and stop me now and I walked out of the cast and never looked back <laughs> um, if they ever made a film about your life who would you want to play you oh yeah I've been talking about that as well I said it to Rob Butler I, I could do that you <laughs> 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 the same hair as me yeah. <laughs> I don't know really I don't know who's really good for me as, as me I mean there is I don't know really because when I've been watching, most people I've been watching most films that do the same hair as me, but but it would be amazing, and they did do a movie about me. I, say, I, think, know. I think it could be a good film to watch because it's such a story of, you know, being told you, you're never going to wrestle, yeah. and then you, you get into wrestling, and then you're champion. I think it's a good, under, I like, well, I spoke about this before on the podcast, I love an underdog, so you're like my perfect kind of wrestler to watch because it's a real underdog story where everyone's like, you're never going to be champion. And then when you actually win it, it's amazing. Yeah. I, I said to my mother, I said, I just hope they do a movie about me. And my mom <laughs> said, yeah, one day they will definitely will make a movie about you. But yeah, do, you know, do you know what's good as well, Marcus, is that you're um, a champion for much longer than you would, would ever expect because of the, of the pandemic. You've kept yeah. the belts. Yeah. But I want to be a fighting champion because most people, most of them really ask for the matches as well, some of the WAW fans. Someone saying Brandon Innes, that's one of my tag partners, but also my best friend as well, Brandon Innes. I think you mm. I think you saw him on the documentary when me and him were Academy Tag Champions, we were, when he was like wearing the autism heart with different colours on. Yeah. Uh, He's well, a... He's was amazing friend he is, amazing. Yeah, yeah well, me, me and John have signed up to the WAW On Demand, um, which I'm going to do a plug because it's, it's such a good um, online service. It's like £6 for the month, yeah. and there's so much. There's stuff from, like, way back when. There's documentaries. There's all sorts. Um, and a few, a few VR matches on there. Mm. I, do, I really do want to go far in my life, in my wrestling career because that's what my granddad would ask me to do because ever since Eddie passed away years ago he asked me one thing keep wrestling just keep wrestling so so much and that, and the thing is when you when you do get back there'll be going to be a lot of people after that belt who do you yeah. think will who do you want to be the first match against the belt well the first person was uh, Brad, Brandon Innes. They want to see me taking on him. Mm. Uh, James, the blind kid. He's actually a good wrestler. I'd love to wrestle him. Uh, most of them saying Zag Knight or Roy Knight. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, they're going to lose a lot of weight then. Uh, <laughs> Jason Cross, who wrestles in Wales, he's actually a good trainer. He, he actually understands me a lot as well. Mm. Um, Brad O'Brien, he, he, brought, he texts me on my Facebook post saying, my title. He said, <laughs> I was like, so what I did, I put big capital letters saying, bring it on. Yeah. And I can't remember who else. I think that's it, I think. I mean, WAW, it's a, such a great promotion. They also have the women's um, wrestling as well, which is just, the women wrestling is so good, isn't it, John? Yeah. I think, I think uh, they're definitely with the right promotion. Including Saray and I. I mean, oh, she was, she's like, she was like a jaguar, she is. <laughs> when I wrestled her. <laughs> it was me then, um, Trey C. Um, me and Trey C taking on Scott um, Edgar and um, Saray and I. So oh. I said, I said, you know what, I'm going to, I got Saray and I, me and you start. <laughs> but I think myself, oh, I guess you fool. What have you done? <laughs> yeah, she's fierce, isn't she? She looks like a badass. Yeah, but she's so sweet outside of the ring. She is mm. when she's outside the ring, she's just like a cuddly person. But when <laughs> she's in the ring, when she's in the ring, she's a scary devil. <laughs> <laughs> but also, but also a wonderful person. Mm. Yeah, That's good. I think all the nights are, aren't they? They all seem quite. Good for the community as well. Mm. I think um, my best match in 2020 was me versus Ricky Knight Jr. <laughs> um, would you not wrestle him again for the title? I want to. I actually would want to fight Jr. again for the world title. Because I thought I did want it, but when he told me his foot was on the rope, I was like, you are kidding me. <laughs> yeah, but he, I, it, I gave Junior the fight of his life, and he gave me the fight of my life as well. Yeah, maybe that's what you need. You need someone that's just going to push you to the inner limits. Maybe mm. Ricky Knight Junior is the way forward. Because mm. ever since he saw the documentary, he said, "You know what? I'm going to give Marlon Marks a world title shot." Yeah, good. So ever since he put that on there, my mind turned into training mode. To, to get stronger, run, run, and keep fighting and boxing and boxing while I'm doing this, everything <laughs> to get stronger and get ready for junior. Another thing with WAW is the fans are so loyal, aren't they? You have some fans that kind of go to every show. Yeah, they are amazing. They are. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't know me when I first started. Hmm. I think. Yeah, this is going to be another kid. It's going to be crap. Although, also, that's how they first like. That's what how fans do it. They yeah. test you and like, like, nah, this is going to be just one of those punk again. Mm. And then a few years later, when they get to when they understand me, he's like, he's actually going to make it through. Wrestling fans are so clever. Like they know they can smell the rat, and mm. when they see potential, wrestling fans know it, don't they? Mm. Just like when Randy Orton first started WWE, and everyone was like, nah, he's just another nose punk. But when he took on a shocking victory over a hard, good high, hardcore Harley, everyone was like, another dog just beat one of the biggest wrestlers named. <laughs> <laughs> and look at him now. Look at him now. By taking on Bray Wyatt at um, WrestleMania. I actually am looking forward to this WrestleMania. But that, not that one against the Miz and what's his name? Not really a problem. Yeah. Mm. I don't, I don't think anyone has. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get upset. Him and Bad Bunny is just ridiculous. But I think no matter what, I mean, it's a cliche, but no matter what the, the card is, you mm. always look forward to WrestleMania, don't you? Mm. It's just one of the events that you just, you know, it's like a, um, it's a full, WrestleMania is a full <laughs> spectacle. You get invested in like the whole weekend, you know, the, with the uh, go home show and mm. you know the pre show, yeah, it's like it's a Super Bowl of wrestling, isn't it? Yeah, they also said, um, one of the matches, Randy on versus AJ Styles, they said 
that match was all when the lights were all off. They said they had a few problems, I think. I can't remember what they, I don't know what they meant, but when I look on YouTube, it's like, oh, the lights are all off. Mm. Well, that's going to remain that then. <laughs> Will you be watching this year's WrestleMania then, Marcus? Um, well, this year's WrestleMania. Mm. I just don't really know anymore, really, because I prefer the old days, the Undertaker to John Cena to Shawn Michaels to CM Punk. I mean, I didn't really enjoy much of Brock Lesnar either, because, I mean, mm. if you remember the last few years back, he didn't even show up when he won the title. He didn't show up <laughs> no. in his role. <laughs> That's not a champion in my books. A yeah, champion, I totally agree. A champion shows up the shows, shows up and defends his title every single night. Yeah. Not I so say that's all the same. <laughs> yeah. Just watch the show, yada, yada, yada. Don't give a damn. I'll get paid anyway. Hand it over. If I was, <laughs> if I was, I would say, bro, Get over here, get your furry ass over here. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, for you, Marcus, 2021, how is it shaping up? Shaping up for me, I'm just getting ready to get back in that ring and get more stronger. Facing yeah. so many dream opponents, some few rival matches already, already been called by Brad O'Brien. I've definitely got his attention. But the best thing is that Zach told me that Chris Jericho actually did see in the documentary. Uh, really? Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. So when he saw me playing his video, when he says, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> <laughs> but when he saw that, I said to my mother, I think I really, I must have got his sense now. Mm. <laughs> That's cool. Um, to, another thing to talk about, you finish your moves. Um, it looks amazing. How did you come up with that? Um, what, the stunner or the moonsault? The uh, moonsault. Oh, come on. It was one of the old wrestling gems that Ricky Jr. taught me, and it was difficult. Because mm. you had to move your head right back, like completely bend, completely flip your body right over yeah. like a shell or something. It took me ages to do it. I nailed it about a few times I did. The turnbuckle I couldn't do it because that's when I froze up by accident. So I said, I quickly whispered, like, I need to do it on the ropes. I'll do it more better. So I pulled him to the ropes and did it on him. But I know he's, and then so he kicked down and so that's how pretty much dangerous that move was. But the most crazy move that he wanted me to do was the Canadian Destroyer. Was it, what's that? So what it is, the person, it's like their head's down when they're standing up and the person put their legs between between the person's head and flip over and the person uh, hold on to the legs, go flip backwards. Yeah, I've seen yeah. that. It looks so good though. Um, yeah, it's a great payoff. But it's actually a really dangerous move. Mm. Yeah. I was like, it oh. must, with a name like that, it must be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I nail it twice, and they were beautiful. Because when mm. I didn't play, I didn't really do it much. The only thing I noticed myself, I don't really do good things in training. But when I'm in shows, I just nail it, just like that. Yeah. I don't know how that's, I'm doing that. That's when it counts, isn't it? When yeah. you're in front of the crowd. Yeah. Well, Marcus, it's been um, an absolute pleasure talking to you, uh, and thank you for showing us the belt as well. Of course, yeah, and also a little, little mini me as well. <laughs> yeah, I love, honestly, I absolutely love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, if I had my still my wrestling figures, I would have used them, using them. <laughs> <to play with them. laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's amazing to join and talk to you guys. Oh, no, it's amazing to have you, you on. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be a great year for you and for WAW. Um, hopefully, me and John can get down to a few shows. We're going to try and get down to Norwich, aren't we? Well, <laughs> try to mm -hmm. do some bumps. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, thank you uh, for joining us, uh, Marcus, everyone. Thank you very much. It's an honour to you. be Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.